Hey guys, welcome back. Broadway Limited recently released the Milwaukee S3, a 484 locomotive, but this time in Paragon 4. So we're going to take a look at this locomotive and show you what you get starting next. Okay, so let's go ahead and unbox this locomotive. You see the new Paragon 4 print on the box here. So Paragon 4 has some improvements. One of them most notable is the capacitor. They have a little bit of a capacitor built in so that you can go over some not so clean track or not so conductive track without any problems. Here's some notes about the 261. You can always pause this to read those. But they talk about CVs mostly on those notes. Exploded parts diagrams are listed here. You also have a DCC function controller, uh, DCC controller function table here, so you can look at all that. 28 functions. Broadway Limited locomotives are always packed to the gills with functions. And then the operator's manual, always a nice glossy over 30 page manual with all sorts of information from functions to configuration variables to maintenance. Then you have the locomotive itself in the box here. Again, this is 261 and we're gonna pull this out of the box and take a look now. Okay, so blister packaging as they call it, plastic sleeve and then two sides pop off. And it just goes like that. And you have a clamp. You also see some baggies. There's traction tires where there's a hex key that you can install those with. And, or not a hex key, but a tool. And then a coupler for the, usually the front coupler. It looks like there's already maybe a dummy coupler installed. I'm gonna lift this up. Got soft plastic protecting the paint job on this from the hard plastic. And we're going to pull this out. Same with the bottom. Some soft plastic protecting the paint job. Let's take a closer look. Alright, we're all centered on the nose of this as we take a closer look. There's a bell. It's actually free swinging. A single chime air horn there. An emergency light, a headlight, number boards, classification lights. On the pilot there is a coupler that flips up and down. You can replace that with an actual coupler that was included in the box. This is a dummy coupler that may or may not actually work uh, in terms of coupling. I know it's a little hard to see so I'm going to change angle for, angles for you guys. But uh, that is the, the coupler that drops down. And that's uh, actually on the 261. So really cool there. They did actually use authentic sounds from the 261. They recorded them, so we'll listen to that later. So we work back towards the dome area here. You do have a whistle, some handrails, some molded in latches, some safety valves towards the back and a walkway for the crew not to mention all the side rod detail the lead trucks and trailing trucks here on the smoke box side on the fire box side back towards the rear there's some plumbing rivet detail here and then you got the trailing trucks with nice detail as well your drivers are there and cab figures installed. Nice coal load on this. 261 is coal fired, so that's actually accurate. And that gives you a little pier to the other crew member inside, and a little pier inside as I kind of offset this. There's a firebox door, butterfly doors, uh, and a lot of nice detail inside that's really hard to capture because of the tinder, but maybe you'll get a peek there. As we talk about the tinder, we've got water hatches, the coal load we just talked about. There's the rear of the tinder with grab irons and ladders. And a coupler, spring-loaded coupler with magnetic glad hand on the back. And we're going to come up the other side here so you can see some more detail. 
We've got dynamo right here in front of the cab. And ash pan, which is also accurate for coal-fired locomotive. And on the front, we're back to the lead trucks, eccentric crank, eccentric crank, and other uh, details on the gear there, the running gear. So that's a 360 of this locomotive. It's kind of hard to capture on camera. Uh, likes to go out of focus, so hopefully you got a good look at that on the locomotive Milwaukee Road logo there on the tender as well. All right, so we've uh, started the engine, not the extended startup. I do encourage you to go check out my full review, but we just started it because I don't have any smoke fluid. I've got some on order, so I don't want to burn up the smoke in this unit here. But we're going to listen to some sounds real quick. There's the bell. There's the whistle. I'm going to do the alternate whistle too. Which is uh, at the air horn that I showed earlier on the details. So there's a couple of whistles that are just standard. There's also some other ones built in. Uh, we'll go ahead and show you the puffing smoke real quick by going the one speed step. Now I want to actually start puffing or chuffing until you get a little more speed behind it usually. There's two. You see that's in sequence. And there's four chuffs per revolution of the wheel, which is also correct. Showed you slow speed control there as well while we were multitasking. Here's one in reverse. Two. Seems to be pretty smooth operating. Three. I slowed it down a bit. I had actually jumped up. Four. And five. Alright, I want to show you the headlight here. You hear the dynamo spool up when you turn it on. So the headlight's nice and prototypical. Class lights, although they are not lit through the system, they have a prism effect that catches light fairly well, so when you have a light on, it almost appears like they're lit. Alright, F24 is the light there, so as you can see, it still moves the locomotive and everything with that light going. We also have a rear light you can see here, but we're doing the pull test right now. It's going crazy. Uh, 14, 7, all over the place. This thing, I don't know what Broadway Limited engineers do, but whatever they do with pull test, they do it well because, I mean, at the minimum, I saw 7, I think, flash on there, which is insane amount over a hundred uh, regular HO freight cars so these things are going to be able to pull whatever you want now just to wrap this review up there are a few other points I want to make it's a die cast chassis so all metal runs smooth sounds are good uh, Paragon 4 still plays with the subwoofer that you can buy from Paragon 3 plus adds track interruption 
and a couple other features. So if you have an electrical interruption, it's still going to go for a few seconds, and I'll show you that real quick. Well, I'm going to just show you that I unplugged my alligator clamp right now. 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4. So about 4 seconds, because I set it a couple seconds late, but about 4 seconds of track interruption there built into the capacitor. So pretty good uh, there. And Broadway Limited sells those separately too, called Go Packs, that are basically compatible with certain models that you can add a capacitor to their models. So... Overall, really nice model. I'll uh, <clears throat> be sure to check the search bar where you can look at the full review of the S3 from about five years ago and about 70 pounds ago. <clears throat> you guys can check that out where you see all of the features of this locomotive. I was a little pressed for time because I don't have any smoke and I hit F7 and it turned off the smoke unit and I realized that towards the end of the review. Um, but F7 does control smoke on and off. So with that said, thanks for watching, guys. We are... Getting places with the layout, lighting has been wrapped up, so there's lighting everywhere except for this mobile light right here. That's just temporary, but we're almost done with lighting, and bench work is done, so soon we will be off these, um, you know, roadbed pre-installed tracks onto actual layout for reviews. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time right here on my channel. Take care.